Hello, folks. I'm Josh McGee, and I'm back once again with another rendition of the St. Louis FC Spotlight. Joining me today is STLFC striker and one of the longest tenured players at the club, Kyle Gray. Kyle, thanks so much for joining me today. Awesome. Thanks a lot for having me on the, uh, the interview here. So let's go back to last week, because as we run down the season, uh, games have been getting tired. Uh, playing Group E has been tight basically the whole season. You guys have been in the thick of it. Last weekend was the match against Louisville, the final one of the season. Final one overall had a lot of implications, playoff implications, King Cups implications, and unfortunately it didn't go your guys' way. A 1-0 defeat uh, after conceding on a set piece. Talk to me a little bit about your guys' thoughts on the match. Was it particularly frustrating because was the consensus was that you guys felt like you outplayed Louisville in that match? Yeah, I think – it was a tough one. Um, first of all, obviously they're a very good team. That's why they're they're top of the group right now, and they've won, you know, several championships in the past. But um, a bit frustrating to be able to to feel like, you know, we're we're putting them on the their back foot and uh, kind of dominating play a lot of time, creating the most chances, things like that. And uh, it was yeah, definitely frustrating to to not come away with three points there or even a draw. Um, I'm not I'm not the type of player who who will blame officials by any means. I know there's a lot of, a, like, we're, we're, we're on the field, with the play, you know, the players have to score goals, things like that. But it just hasn't been good enough from, from the referees and this season. And in each week you, you kind of have a little glimpse of, of hope that it's going to be better. And I told the ref after the game, I said, look, this is how I feed my kids. Uh, what you're doing is affecting my livelihood. And it's just, that's a bit frustrating. There was a clear cut handball. Um, and just different decisions that were made. It felt like we had a target on our back before the whistle even started. And that was tough to swallow. Um, that aside, definitely, definitely frustrating for us not to be able to put one on the back of the net. We hit the post at least two times, um, a couple offside goals as well. And so, you know, the feeling and the consensus around the group is that we played well and we have a lot of confidence going into this final week, um, despite the, the loss. So actually, I was going to ask you about the officiating because it actually goes back to the Sporting KC game. Uh, Coach Steve Chichu had talked about it a couple of times in the post-game presser, and he's not one usually to talk about those types of things. So I wanted to ask you, just from on the field, you know, in your conversations with the officials, you mentioned the handball, other instances maybe having to do with the fouls and basically certain things being a yellow card, certain things not being one. What is the overall, what's the main frustration with you guys with the officiating these past couple of weeks? Yeah, I think it's just consistency. I think, that, you know, there are referees that will let you play through a little, a little bit more fouls and, and more aggressive type play. Then there's refs that, you know, might be more prone to, to blow the whistle um, earlier and uh, can kind of control the game in that way. But there's just a big discrepancy between, um, you know, letting guys play and not letting guys play. And, and you know, maybe, maybe giving one of the players on, you know, our team a yellow card if you kick the ball away in frustration, but you don't give one of their players a uh, the same thing. And that, that's just been frustrating for us. You know, uh, you want to, you want to feel like the officiating is there to help the flow of the game and keep it from getting out of hand. But when it seems like it's, it's a little bit of, you know, them having their part in the game, that's when it gets frustrating is, is when you feel like almost an ego uh, gets, gets in, in the way. And, and that's what is disappointing. So, as I mentioned, that was the final game against Louisville City FC. Obviously, it's tough to not come away with the Kings Cup this year. I know you guys really wanted to pull one out in the final season of it. But overall, over the years, with the club and those guys coming at the same time in 2015, uh, the battles that you've had back and forth, even this year, the success you guys had winning on the road in their brand new stadium. Talk a little bit about being a part of that rivalry because it's not really a traditional, you know, St. Louis rivalry like we've had with other Chicago teams other Kansas City teams. It's a little bit different. Talk to me about uh, your experiences with that rivalry. Yeah, it's been it's been unique for sure. I think, you know, there's not really any other sports in Louisville. I know they have the minor league baseball, but um, that doesn't really establish a rivalry. But to have this rivalry between two cities, you know, with, you know, King Louis in the, uh, in the name, I guess, uh, brings you the Kings Cup. And it's always a battle. It's always, you know, they're a very good team, obviously, as well. And um, so it's always uh, uh, a gritty game and a gritty performance. And uh, again, unfortunate not to come away with the final one here for for the fans and for the city. But um, again, it's been awesome having this uh, this rivalry um, 
within the teams. It's always fun playing against them. And it, it's always one that you kind of mark on the calendar each and every year. And unfortunately that goes away now, but uh, we'll see what happens in the future. So we fast forward to this week, right? Final week of the regular season. Uh, your guys' playoff status, unfortunately, is not in your hands at the moment. Everybody will be glued to the screen Wednesday night to watch Indy and Sporting KC too. How does that go when for your guys' preparation this week, knowing that it's out of your hands, but you have to prepare for the match on Saturday, possibly knowing that you could be fighting for your playoff status? Yeah, I think we just have to approach this week, you know, the same as if, you know, we're going to be in the playoffs or not in the playoffs. I think we can't take a day off. We can't take a day lightly. And, you know, we've had a good training sessions thus far and, and we'll continue to do that. But obviously, yeah, like you said, we'll be watching and then hoping. And there's that little bit of hope left. I know Kansas City had gotten a result in, in Indy um, earlier in the season as well. And they've played some tough games for them. Um, even, even one that uh, Indy had won, there was a kind of a questionable goal called back from, from Sporting Kansas City that would have changed the game and hopefully putting a lot of pressure on, on Indy to get a result and we'll see what happens. And uh, yeah, I mean, the hope is alive for sure and, and we'll see what tomorrow night brings. So Kyle, I want to get your thoughts on the season overall because it's, it's obviously the strangest and, you know, most topsy-turvy that you guys have ever experienced. And obviously you want to finish it off strong. You want to hopefully, you know, make the playoffs, maybe make a bit of a run here. But in terms of, you know, just getting through the season, especially in the beginning with all the protocols and all of the precautions that you guys had to take to get to this point, to be able to have completed, you know, the season, is there a sense of relief that you guys were able to accomplish what you have already? I think yes. You know, I think the season will go down with, a, with a, you know, a little bit of emptiness, I think, just because of the fact that the club's going away as well. You know, like, you know, we feel like we didn't, you know, kind of like have our sending off by be able to being able to complete a full season you know but it's funny though on the flip side I was talking to a couple of the guys yesterday and and they're like man this is like felt like the longest shortest season ever like obviously we're pretty much going to be ending at the same date that we would be ending normally as far as a regular season standpoint um but it has been a whirlwind for sure uh mentally like you alluded to a bit earlier um just with you know the start stop start stop and then I know I've mentioned to you before in other interviews as well, just personally kind of stop starting and stopping, you know, several times for myself because my family and my, and my son being born and all that. And so, yeah, it's been a, it's been an interesting one and, and definitely one that hopefully we don't have a season like this in the future. Hopefully we can, you know, play twice amount as twice the amount of games that we were playing this season and, and playing everyone because like you, you said too, like, this top, this group is very difficult. Group E is a very like no one can even overlook Kansas City. They gave us, you know, two ninety min ninetieth minute. It took us ninety ninety plus minutes to to get a result, you know, a tie that first round and that first game we played them and then this past this last time we played them to to get a the three points. Um it's never been easy against them and obviously you've seen the results that they've had against the other teams and so like Louisville and Indy and they've they've beat them both away. And so, you know, this is not an easy group. And I'm confident that if we don't get into the playoffs, we can, like, we can look at our point total and the teams that we've played, you know, four times each and, and be, uh, be confident that, you know, if it were a different season, that we would be able to, to make the playoffs, regardless of how this result goes on Wednesday. Hopefully it goes our way. And then, we can prove that we deserve to be in the playoffs on, on Saturday against Indy. But yeah, like I said, I think, I think you would see us um, in the playoffs with no, pro with no issues if we were, you know, playing some of these other teams, not to discredit those teams at all, but it's a, it's different when you're playing, uh, you know, three fourths of your schedule against some very, very, very tough opponents. So even though again, playoff status still up in the air, regardless of whether you guys will continue to get to play or whatever, like we've mentioned, this is the final season for St. Louis FC. And while you weren't there at the beginning when they came into the league 2015, like I said, you're one of the longer tenured players right now on the roster. From the time that you came into this club up into this point, what are you, I would say, most proud of in terms of the growth and development either you've personally undergone through or as a club, what you guys have been able to go through? Uh, I'll, I'll do both. I'll, I'll say from a personal standpoint, I think, 
um, just being like pretty much the longest tenured striker there. And then that leading to being the all time leading goal scorer as well has been really special for me individually. And then also just a place to call home for, you know, three seasons has been amazing. Um, I would, it, it's great to have that stability and that, you know, place that you can kind of, you know, put some roots, um, roots down for a little bit. It's, it's very uncommon in this profession. Um, and then obviously growing my family here as well has been really special for me with this, with this club. And then um, from a, a team standpoint, I think that first season I was here in 2018 was the first, first time that the club had made playoffs. And that was just, you know, such a special season. And that was my best season statistically um, as well. And, and that was just a special group of guys and we have a special group of guys now as well. And, and so that, that playoff um, birth, I guess, was, was really special. And just seeing how much it meant to the fans after we clinched was, was amazing. And, and yeah, and then obviously I would say last year's open cup run was really special as well, just for obvious reasons, you know, each, each and every game felt like a world cup game and it, it was great. So going forward, it's obviously difficult to predict the future for all of you guys. Um, but if, again, if you want to continue your playing your career, I would have think years ago when the USL was getting still in its infancy and trying to become, you know, a bigger league in the U.S., it would be maybe a scarier feeling uh, like about your status again, going out and continuing to play. But seeing now, much like St. Louis FC has since it's joined, the USL grow over the years and now where we're going to have the USL final on ESPN here in a couple of months and the TV deals and all the things that they've improved over the few years, going out there and knowing that potentially you could be finding a point elsewhere. What, I guess, going forward, if you continue playing the USL that you're most excited about in the coming years for the league? Yeah, I think it's very, it's, you know, it's come such a long way. I've been in the league since 2013 and then I think we had 12 or 14 teams by then and several of those teams have left since then. And, you know, the amount of growth and professionalism that's uh, gained traction over the years has been incredible to see. And, you know, you can see the type of players that are getting attracted to playing this league. You know, we've had Joe Cole play in this league. We've had Didier Drogba play in this league. And, and other bigger players, you know, from, from Europe, I think it's becoming an attractive league um, because of the opportunities and, you know, the several markets that are around um, the the country. And so, yeah, I think – it's something that's definitely exciting, but I think this, the off season is always scary. It's super scary. And, you know, it's cutthroat. It's, it's a business at the end of the day. And sometimes it doesn't matter what you've done in the past and things like that. And I've been, I've experienced that firsthand, you know, where I'm coming from Vancouver Whitecaps, you know, kind of the highest in my career and then struggled to find a team. And then fortunately St. Louis took a chance on me, um, you know, three weeks late into preseason and, and, you know, that's why I hold a special place in this club for my, in my heart, just because of, you know, the opportunity that they gave me to, when so many other teams wouldn't. And so I've experienced that. I think you can go into uh, off seasons with a little bit of confidence, but I think you have to, you have to, you know, realize that there can be some scary times for sure. And what are you going to do? Maybe when you hit some adversity like that and you can't find a team, are you going to, are you going to panic or is it going to, you know, consume your thoughts and, and, put you in a deep dark place or are you gonna you know stay positive and and just see how it plays out and so hopefully uh hopefully our guys especially because you know all of our guys are obviously leaving the team because the team's not going to exist hopefully our guys um aren't experience aren't going to experience that so you've already mentioned a few things individual accomplishments and team accomplishment accomplishments over the years but i want to even open it up even further and talk a little bit about again keeping it positive what are some of your favorite memories, moments, conversations? Uh, again, also, again, you can continue to go with accomplishments that you've had over your tenure with St. Louis FC. It was really fun talking to Sam a few weeks ago, mentioning some of the things uh, from the very beginning all the way up to this season uh, that you guys have been a part of. It can be on the field accomplishments or it can be off the field moments. Again, you've talked about raising a family here in St. Louis. I'm sure that's up there as well with some of these other moments that you've had. Definitely. Um... I would say like one specific moment that sticks out to me was 2018, my first, uh, my first goal at home in front of the fans, just because I hadn't gotten the opportunity to play in front of the fans up to that point. And uh, it was against, ironically enough, it was against Steve's, Steve's uh, Colorado switchbacks. And 
it was just a very unique goal that I would never score. It was kind of like a half chance. I just looped it over the goalkeeper and it, and it went in. That was a special one that stuck out to me just because of, you know, that was kind of my, uh, my ticket into the fans' hearts. And so that, that's one that really sticks out to me as far as a, a goal. Um, like I mentioned to you before, that season overall, statistically, individually, and, you know, as a team accomplishing and getting to the playoffs was, was really special. Um, and then, like you said, and I said earlier, um, yeah, planting roots here, having friends outside of zo the soccer community um, has been awesome for my wife and, and our boys. Um, obviously, one's a little bit younger, so he can't play, but just having neighbors that the, my oldest son, Milo, can play with. And that's been the, the coolest thing is just, like, to watch my son, like, turn my oldest son turn in, like, from a baby – which he was four weeks or sorry, four months old when we moved here. And now he's you know, going to be three in December and just seeing him be able to you know, turn into a full on like kid. That's been like really, really special. And that's what I'll remember about this place. Um, this is where my son grew up really. And he'll have memories of here and it'll be sad to move. And we've, we, we haven't really told him that we're going to be leaving, but it's going to be, it's going to be a sad day for sure. Well, you will be in one more moment. Uh, to all of those and that'll be on Saturday uh, when you guys play against Indy uh, regardless most likely uh, outside of whether you guys will be playing for playoffs or not it's most likely going to be your guys's final home game there uh, again even if you guys were able to advance into the playoffs so again it's tough because fans won't be there or at least in in bulk they won't be there but regardless of the stakes whether you guys are playing for playoffs or not how do you want to go out obviously with three points but if you were going to say we want to go out playing St. Louis FC ball what is that about? What do you guys hope to go out with? Yeah, I think we want to play you know, an exciting style where, you know, as you saw, maybe even Louisville, we were, you know, we were possessing the ball. We were going forward a lot. We weren't um, keeping possession pointlessly. Um, there was a purpose to the possession that we had. It was, it was breaking lines, going forward, creating chances. And that's what I would love to see on Saturday against Indy is, you know, that type of football in that um, exciting way and then putting the ball in the back of the net and, and getting three points and really sticking it to them. Because like you said, even if, even if Wednesday doesn't go, the result doesn't go our way, um, that'll be our final kind of stamp on this city and, and for the fans and, and for the club. And, you know, it's the last game. It's crazy to think about. That's the last game in the USL for St. Louis FC. And that's, you know, sad to think about. It's a harsh reality, but we want to go out in style. We want, we would want to go out, um, you know, with a bang and we have nothing to lose. You know, either way, we have nothing to lose. Hopefully we're playing for, uh, for playoff contention there. And, and I'm confident we can take care of business if, if that's the uh, situation. All right, Kyle, I'll get you out of here on this question. Usually I like to end it uh, asking the players if they have any of the message to the fans, because, Again, this whole season has been played pretty much without those guys. And now with the added circumstances of this being potentially your guys' final game, I am going to assume there will be some type of message or something the fans will get across to you guys. But you've made a lot of fans uh, proud and over the years, and not just, again, as players, but as people. But on the flip side of that, if your interactions with the fans, and obviously with athletes, they play for several teams over time, and every fan base has treated them pretty good. But what makes – St. Louis FC, the fans, uh, special to you? Yeah, they're awesome people. Obviously, um, during games, home or away, they've traveled. They've traveled, you know, to Kansas City and had more fans in Kansas City. You know, they've traveled, and we've heard them, been able to hear them at, you know, big fan bases like Louisville and Indy uh, when, they've, when they've been able to go. And it's been, it's been awesome. Yeah, the fans um, at home, obviously, are, are cheering and uh, drumming and, they never cease to uh, to quit uh, pushing us on. But I think the coolest thing about these fans is that they're awesome people as well. They're not just, um, you know, fans on the weekend and then, you know, you know, nobody on, on during the week. They're, they're people who actually care about people and they care about the community. And you can see that with the amount of fundraisers that they've been doing to, to help out, you know, you know, people that, can't eat and that's just something that's really really special and you know I don't think we've ever really been to a place where you know the Luligan ladies have reached out to my wife and tried to make her feel welcome and you know they go out of their way to make sure that she's you know doing well and that 
everything's going all right if she needs help with anything at the games or anything like that and uh yeah they're they're more than fans is is that how is how i would describe them um they've been awesome to me and my family they've been awesome to each and every team that's you know been out on the field for the last three years and it's going to be sad that you know we can't have them in full force for this final potential home game and uh, but we've we've heard them that, like you said we we haven't been able to experience them this season but you know we've heard them from social media we've heard them you know when they could be there a little bit for a couple of those games and we've heard them at some of the away games and we've also seen them when they've you know provided awesome things for us players as well like at the beginning of this whole thing they gave us um, gift cards to to get groceries and things like that because they weren't sure what our situations were um, and it's just been really special so yeah I uh, love them and, and hope to get three points for them on, on Saturday. Well you guys have been able to make the best out of a tough situation all year and regardless of when the finish is uh, we know that you guys are really going to play all out and we can't wait to see how things wrap up. We'll be watching the Indy game on Wednesday night, but of course, St. Louis FC at home versus Indy 11 at 6.30 on Saturday evening. Uh, what could possibly be uh, the final game of St. Louis FC? Kyle, it's been tremendous talking with you, bud. Thank you so much for joining me today. Yeah, absolutely, man.